Hey guys, it's Silver Snorlax, and I am back with test results from my heat resistance experimentation. So, uh, before I get too into it and before I start going over results with you on video, I do want to direct you to the description again, uh, as there are a couple important bits of information there. So, while you'll be able to see everything here on video, and that's great, um, I also have more uh, numerical data as well. So, you'll see a uh, spreadsheet down in the description that gives you kind of how I ran my test, uh, that gives me all the degrees, uh, variations in degrees, uh, how much time elapsed during the test. Uh, it covers a lot of data, so I really recommend you just take a look at that even if it's a quick look. Uh, something else that I'll be doing and doing in uh, a lot of detail is right after this video goes live, I'll be doing a um, quick posting for the Elite Four forms. Uh, there'll be a quick uh, write-up as far as to what my um, experiment showed, so you'll be able to read that and get a real in-depth look at that. So, if you like the quick version, video is probably for you, but if you want a more in-depth and comprehensive understanding, check out that article as well. So, alright, now that that's out of the way, we can actually go ahead and open this bad boy up and take a look at it. So, um, this test was run for 88 minutes. We actually cooked this safe for about an hour. And then we allowed a 28 minute cooldown time. That 28 minute cooldown time uh, allowed the safe's internal ten or, um, external temperature of the safe to reach 125 degrees, which means it was much more ha handleable. I could actually go ahead and open the lock and all that good stuff. So um, that's why I chose the degree amount that I did. As you can see, uh, the exterior did not fare extremely well. There's a lot of warping. Uh, the compression handle still works. The locking mechanism that's down here that requires a key actually failed when I opened the chest. Um, I have opened this chest previously to examine the contents, uh, but now we're just doing a follow-up on video, so just FYI there. So, we'll go ahead, we'll open it up, because I'm sure you guys are dying to see. That compression latch still kind of works. And we'll open this bad boy up. And we're going to go everything one by one. First, let's talk about what did a really good job of surviving. So, the thing that blew my mind more than anything, this is a full booster box, Evolution's booster box. Um, totally unscathed, untouched. Um, I would have bet the ranch that the plastic wrap would have uh, melted right off, but it didn't. Box, when I removed the box uh, after uh, 88 minutes of grilling, we saw um, Pretty much no change in the box whatsoever. It, it just it, it was what it was. Box was warm, but that was the only real telltale anything. Uh, next thing I'd like like to look at uh, just some of the standard cards. Um, this was just a raw card I put in there, no sleeve, nothing special. It has started to curl pretty heavily. Uh, however, the actual card itself survived really, really well, and I was uh, pretty happy to see those results. Um, cards within uh, gaming sleeves. Um, I don't know what brand this is, actually. It's probably like Ultra Pro or something. I bought these off eBay ages ago. Um, these all did really well. Um, they didn't stick. They didn't uh, stick to the inside of the cases, I, I should say. They didn't melt. Uh, nothing. I mean, you can remove the card. And front and back card looks good. So that's something I noticed with this test, is that that did uh, really well. Here's something I really wanted to look at. We had thrown a booster pack in here as well. And it's really not changed that much. It looks like some of the edges of the actual uh, foil wrapping might have warped a little bit. That's not a huge deal. Um, but uh, I did want to open these up on camera just for sake of video proof. Let's see how the internals did. If they're anything like the other cards we saw, they could be just fine. All right, take a look. No card trick. And nothing sticking together. We're in really good shape here. Yeah. Um, you're welcome to my code there. Take a look at the back. No obvious discoloration, no warping, nothing. The booster pack did really well in the safe, so I will say that. Now let's get into the rest of it. So here, if you want the quickest version of this, plastic did not do well in this test whatsoever. Um, as you can see from my um, testing results and my write-up that I've done, um, we definitely surpassed 158 degrees. I actually don't know what the internal temperature of the safe was, as I wasn't. Uh, I was trying to run an internal thermometer, which maxed out at 158 degrees. However, that malfunctioned during the test because it got so hot. So unfortunately, that failed for us. Um, but we can take a look at some of the other items in this case to see how they did. 
and uh, they're a little mixed. The results are a little mixed. Um, I put in a magnetic one-touch holder. Uh, the card inside got badly warped, badly damaged. You can see that's actually a sleeve around it. But the case itself, you'll notice it is pretty shot. And I take that card out. And really what I look for is if the card is recoverable or not. Can you send it in for a regrade? Is it worth grading? Anything like that. And uh, to be blunt, this Charizard has seen better days. It's badly, badly warped. Um, the uh, sleeve itself took most of the damage. Uh, but this card, unfortunately, I would deem as pretty much shot. Moving on, looking at the screw down holder. Also, got a pretty good warping. You can see it kind of bowed out. Um, the card inside actually doesn't look too bad. I would actually deem that as recoverable. I don't have a screwdriver, I didn't feel like opening it up. But um, just on a visual inspection, that actually looks like it was to some degree recoverable. Snap case. I really highly dislike these, and this is just more evidence and proof for why I dislike them. Um, total failure, warped like crazy, totally destroyed. The plastic started to melt even. Uh, not even a warping, it was flat out melting. Uh, the card uh, sleeve looks like it has shrunk around the card itself. We can take it out and the card is somewhat curved due to the high heat exposure, so unfortunately that did not work out the way I had hoped either. Take those, put them in the trash where they belong. Um, moving on, I'm sure one, everybody's going to be curious about how the top loader did, as this is probably one of the most common protection methods out there. Um, top loader got pretty warped, as you might imagine, anything plastic got warped. So you can see that's how that, that looks in the light. You can see how the sleeve looks. And the card itself, well, it's pretty much on par with what we've been seeing. Um, you've got that high warping factor. Um, the card itself, I'm surprised, I'm surprised none of the cards discolored or any, anything like that. So um, I guess that's a good, good sign. Uh, we'll take a look at the card savers, my preferred method of protection. See how they did. Uh, we have a couple, couple three here that uh, really have seen better days. We had a um, single sleeve version, and it's pretty much on par with the top loader. The case is shot. Card is shot. This one's actually double sleeve. Excuse me. Well, let's see if keeping it in two sleeves did anything for us. Plastic definitely shrunk. Um, Warping is not as noticeable. If there's any warping at all, it may have may have just been like that pr prior to test, but that's actually pretty straight. So, double sleeved. I mean, the whole the card saver is shot. No question. Both sleeves are shot. Anything plastic is shot. Uh, I'll take a look at our Mewtwo here. Oh, boy, that's crunchy. I don't know if I can get that card out. I'm going to be totally honest. I haven't tried to get them out until this video. Okay, there we go. We got some room. That is an ugly, ugly warping. Out of the sleeve, well, that's a crunchy sleeve, and a little warp. Got a little bit of warping, not as bad as I thought it would be. It's still, still something. Um, anything in one of those um, kind of gaming sleeves did well, so this would not surprise me. I can never get this out. Take a look. Interesting, the uh, other sleeves did not fail. Uh, did not warp like this one has. You can see all that crinkling. And I bet you that's from the card saver. So, might have actually made it worse by putting it in, into a card saver. It's a very interesting um, conclusion to come to. And that one's definitely, definitely seen better days. So, last but not least, definitely not least, let's see how the PSA slabs did. The most important thing in here. So, we have our Victini. And we're going to take a look. It's a little hard to see on camera, but there is, in fact, some warping to the slab. It's not straight up and down. It's it's pretty minor here. Um, this one's still in a sleeve, so I think that might have actually helped it. I'm not sure how, because uh, you'll see, see the other results in a second here. But um, if I were to send this in for a regrade, I would say this card is recoverable. So I was actually pretty happy with that. However, take a look at this one that did not have a sleeve around it. Our Palkia did. You know, it's a nice big indent right there, and that's where the uh, actual case itself kind of came in and pushed the sleeve, or pushed the uh, card, and just damaged and bent it all the hell. And you can see it on the back as well, super warped. Uh, unfortunately, this is not a card that would have been recoverable, so I would have to give this a failure. 
rating. So, slightly mixed results. Um, learned a couple of things. Again, a lot of it will be in the write-up that I do for E4, so you can view it there. Um, but uh, something that I did notice with this particular model is this uh, sentry safe, a medium-sized uh, fire chest, actually. Fire, fire chest, slightly different from a safe. Um, you'll notice there are these little little holes in here. Um, and there are holes in the... Um, let's see if I can get a quick shot of it. Ah, there we go. There are holes or some kind of um, thinner plastic there at the, uh, the top of the lid there. Um, that's super thin and really does not work out well because when you leave this inside a safe that runs at 350, the bottom starts to melt. And if these are difficult to move, I'm going to try and show you on camera. Um, the bottom of my um, grill, which was covered in tin foil, um, actually was the only heat contact surface. And you can see the bottom of that safe. Move my camera here. You can kind of see that. See how that's all scarred and, and meshed and melted and stuff? Yeah, that, that really did not go over well. Um, but that actually melted through the bottom, which is where you would have your heat contact surface in a safe anyway. So the, this are, these holes are almost see-through. Um, so a lot of heat was allowed to come up and into the case. And I don't know if these holes in the lid are meant to then vent that. That doesn't make sense to me, but that appears to be what has happened. So I'm sure that's why we got a lot of the heat transfer that we did. Um, a couple other conclusions I can come from this. Um, I looked at heat as something that you could kind of define by ratio. You know, if something runs at a hundred degrees and you put a safe inside of it, you know, then that safe runs at 50 degrees, you know, real simple basic math. And really that's not how the dynamics of thermal anything works. So I certainly don't claim to be an expert on it by any means, but it is a starting point. It's something to learn from. So that's kind of a big deal. So uh, to be fair, because this test ran for 88 minutes, including a cool down period, um, it, this is not a safe that was designed for that kind of test. The theory was it could withstand that without issue. Unfortunately, it cannot. So that is what it is. Uh, one other thing, or uh, yeah, one other thing I wanted to mention about the safe. Um, I know I just showed the lid a second ago, but I really didn't go over uh, what was around the lid, and I, I didn't show it in any of the pictures I took for uh, E4 either. But uh, there's a rubber seal that goes around the lid. Um, let me show you how that did. That's how that did. That came right off as soon as I opened up the safe. I said, oh man, one of the most important parts of the safe. Um, I looked for like glue residue or something that would have lined the outside. I don't think they glued them in. I think they just kind of stick them around the sides and say, have at. So that's a, in my mind, that's a huge design issue um, if you're going to have a safe like that. But uh, not to worry. Uh, I will be doing additional tests on this. I have learned from this uh, some of the things that I can and can't do in terms of uh, testing this and testing this theory. Uh, so uh, there will be more videos regarding this. This is only part one, I'm hope, or excuse me, part two. We'll, I hope to look at more uh, aspects of this. And I'll be uploading videos as we do that, and there'll be more uh, conversation about it. So as always, guys, thank you for watching. If you have additional input, comments are there for you. Uh, thanks again.